What's up everybody, it's Andy with UnknownPhotographer.net and today I have a really quick Photoshop tutorial that's going to show you how to correct the white balance on certain parts of your image and not the others. Uh, this is really important because uh, it's going to happen to you sometimes, especially when you mix light um, or you have different types of light, sometimes they're going to create uh, two different white balance settings that you're going to have to uh, fix. In this situation, uh, our background is just a little bit too red. I know you can barely tell, but as soon as we fix it, you're going to see that it's really red. Um, and our model is pretty decent. I kind of like that reddish glowish tint that she has. But the background, I really do want it to be completely neutral. I also want to lower the exposure just a little bit, um, but I don't want to affect the exposure on the model. So how do we do this? I'm going to show you right now. And the reason I chose this image that my buddy Corey Melton took, uh, you can check out more of his work over at CoreyMelton.com, is because the masking is a little bit complicated. If we zoom in, uh, we're going to see that she's wearing a fuzzy jacket, a uh, little, she's got some flyaways as well. And it's just a pretty complicated mask. The only thing that we actually have going for us is that it's on a solid background. And uh, that's just going to make our job just a little bit easier. So that's going to be cool. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make a copy of our background layer. And we do that with Control-J on a PC, Command-J on a Mac. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to our adjustment layer. And we're going to click on it. And we're going to go up to Curves. And when the Curves adjustment layer is selected, it automatically creates an adjustment layer above these other two layers. And it automatically creates a mask. And this is our adjustment panel. As you can see, our mask is all white. And if you guys know anything about masks, anything that is white is going to reveal. Anything that is black, it's going to completely conceal. So what it's saying right now is that all this white is actually going to show this effect. So if I was to lower my exposure, it's actually going to lower the exposure of the entire image. And I don't want that because I love the exposure that is on our model. I just don't like the one that's on our background. So let's correct this. Let's create a mask. Let's go over to our mask panel. And what we're going to do, since we actually have a solid colored area or pretty much a solid color area, I'm going to use this technique called color range. And what color range is going to let me do is it's actually going to select let me select an area to mask based on color. So once I click on this, the panel is going to open up. And sorry, guys, it's a huge panel because I'm on a gigantic monitor and my resolution is limited for the screen capturing. So once I click on this, it's going to show me uh, the color range palette. The first thing I want you guys to notice is that my fuzziness is turned up to 30. This is a fine tuning adjustment, so I really want to lower this down to zero. And as you can see, it's all completely black. This is the mask that's going to be created. As you can see here in my adjustment layer down here, my mask is all black as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do to actually start building this mask is I build it using these eyedropper tools that are right here. And the first one here is like the medium eyedropper. I'm just basically telling Photoshop this is what I'm going to be starting at. Uh, the second thing is I'm going to use this plus eyedropper and I'm going to click and drag around my image. As you can see, that Photoshop starts adding these grays that I select to the mask. Now, if there's certain areas that you can't get like this uh, area down here, all, I could also click on this mask and uh, it'll actually add the colors to it. Okay. And once that's pretty much done, I'm not really going to worry about all these little tiny things. It's just too hard to, uh, to get. That's where the fuzziness command comes into play. And we start increasing our fuzziness. And what this is actually doing is just telling Photoshop, hey, I understand there's a couple little pixels around here that are kind of the same color. So since they're kind of the same color, just go ahead and include those in the mask as well. All right. So now I'm going to raise my fuzziness until I start seeing a little bit of my model come through. Now, I don't want this in my final mask selection because it's going to actually affect her as well. Uh, so I just want to have her come through. And the reason I'm doing this is because I really want to make sure that Photoshop gets in between all these little fuzzy flyaways and all these little fuzzy areas. I don't want to leave it too far out because as you can see, it's leaving a whole bunch of extra stuff that I don't want. So I'm just going to increase it 
until I'm pretty much happy with it, which is somewhere around there. That's pretty good to me. I'm going to click OK. And once that's done, you can see that my mask is automatically created. If we go back to our adjustment layer, you can see that it's done a pretty good job. All right. The only thing is I definitely want to polish off uh, my mask and make sure that all those areas like our hands and everything that else that was coming through are taken care of. So I do that by clicking Alt and clicking on the mask on a PC or Option click on the mask on a Mac. I go over to my paintbrush tool, make sure I'm painting with black. And I'm just going to fill in all these areas in the mask that the color range just wasn't able to capture perfectly. I'm just going to fill that in right there. All right. I'm filling that in. Guys, make sure you're using a hard edged brush. Because if you use one of those feathered brushes, you actually might have a little bit of leakage, especially when you're getting really close to this border. Once that's done, I'm just going to click on the Curves Adjustment Layer, uh, and it's going to go back to my view. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sample the background. And I need to sample the background because I need to know exactly how far off we are. So I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool. The shortcut is I. And I'm going to come up here to my sample size, and by default, it's point sample. You almost never want it to be a point sample because this is actually taking a sample of just one pixel. And sometimes there could be noise pixel, it could be a color fringe pixel, it could be something different. So what I want to do is I want to average it out. I don't want it to be so specific to just one pixel. So I'm going to increase this to a 5x5 five five average just so I'm safer. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose somewhere along my background. Since this is all supposed to be an even color, it doesn't really matter exactly where you choose. Um, but just click somewhere. Hold the shift key and you're going to see that the icon changes and click. As soon as that happens, the info palette opens up. And the number one, which is relative to this little number one sample, is going to show up here in this box. The numbers on the left are the numbers that are selected right now and the numbers on the right are the numbers of the correction okay so as you can see if I just was just to grab this you can see that only the numbers on the right are moving around and it's just telling me that this these are my new numbers these were my old numbers it's just so I have a, a reference back to what it used to be okay so the first thing we notice and this is just a quick trick guys anything that is on a grayscale from from white to black all these three numbers have to be even okay that's that's what you call a color balanced image all right just to give you an example perfect white is 255 255 255 a perfect middle gray is 128 128 128 and a perfect black is 000 in this image which this is supposed to be white i'm you know it's supposed to be white even though we didn't hit it with enough light and that's why it's a little bit gray we can see that we have a color shift and we can see this because our red is higher than our green and our green is higher than our blue so we need to correct this color shift even though it's a very small color shift when it comes to printing you'll actually be able to see it so uh, how am I going to do that I'm going to come over here to my curves adjustment layer I'm going to click on my red channel and when I'm in my red channel there's a little hand here if you are on say uh, Photoshop CS4 or 5 and I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to click and drag down. And it's just one little drag down. And you can see that it already evened it out. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is the only other color I have to even out right now is the blue. So I'm going to go back to my blue channel or go back or to the blue channel. And I'm going to click on this. And now I'm going to pull up. And that's going to take it all the way to 195. Of course it is because it's not that fine tuning. The way you fine tune this is actually with our up and down arrows. And if this ever happens to you guys, as you can notice, I can't get the number dead on. That's only because it moves in increments of two. Okay. So what we can do oops, um, is we actually a quick little trick is we just raise it up even higher and then bring it back down somewhere around there. And then we start lowering it until we can um, get the exact number. Okay, so now 192, 192, 192, that means it's a perfect gray. I can also just hold the shift key down, hover around that, and move it around. And just to make sure that the other areas of my background 
are pretty much in the same area. That's pretty close. Um, let me see. That's really close. That's really close. If it's ever really, really far off, all we have to do is um, go to another adjustment. You know, just go back to the curves and just adjust them again. That looks pretty close to me. So I'm pretty happy with it. Let's look at the before and the after. Before and after. I know it's a really subtle change, but as soon as I zoom in, I'm going to show you guys that even this little tiny subtle change before and after before and after all right that color adjustment looks really good the only thing i'd want to do to this is the only other thing i'd like to do is just add uh, a little bit more separation between the background and the subject and i do that by lowering the exposure just a tad so i'm just going to go back to my rgb channel up here i'm going to grab these little mid-tones and i'm just going to pull the background down just a little bit just going to add that right there. And as you can see, if I zoom in, Photoshop, Photoshop did a really good job of getting in between the hairs and all these little areas. Uh, it's just something that would not have been possible without color range. I could have done it with calculations. A little bit more complicated. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that in the future. But for now, when you have a solid background, complicated mask, color range is definitely the way to go. All right, guys. So here's our before and our after, before and after. Much cooler, much better. Uh, Photoshop's masking tools really do help. This is Andy with unknownphotographer.net. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, unknown underscore photog, and uh, Facebook, and definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll catch you later. Ciao.